There is a saying that money in this world cannot buy all that good health that you're looking for. That is a reason why COP USA Radio is bringing to you, you and your health. Heal Africa, rich in organic nutrients. We want to let you know how your body is doing with Nana Obi from the organic way of healthy living. Heal Africa. Fridays between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, rebroadcast on Mondays between the hours of 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Live on COP User Radio. Your health is important. Join us. Folks, welcome back to class. Um, this is Nana Obeng Mayarisa. Um, your host of um, Hill University. I'd like to welcome you back. For those of you who were in class last week, I'm sure you may have learned a few things, um, the overview of classes that we'll be going through. But today, I want to introduce something very important to you, a very um, beautiful subject. Um, it's, uh, it's the core of our health. And I just want to go through with you in the book of uh, Leviticus, in the Bible, um, Leviticus chapter 17, uh, I think verse 11, okay? Um, Leviticus seventeen eleven. the Bible says life is in the blood. And so it is no wonder that when you're not feeling well, when, when you go to see the doctor, the doctor is going to ask you to do your blood work. Now, it's because they're going to try to determine to find out what maladies may be found in your blood, and then they will tell you what is going on. But before anything shows up in your blood, um, the body would have given you signals over time. The body would tell you many, many times that you know you need to take precautions, you need to do something. The body usually, for instance, if you have headache, it's a way of the body communicating with you, saying you probably are not as hydrated or Maybe your iron levels are not, you know, up to par, or different things. If you don't have, for instance, if you have, if you're feeling pins and needle, needles in your toes and, you know, uh, your feet or your fingers, it's an indication that blood may not be flowing very well. So the body is waking you up, asking you to pay attention and make sure that your arteries are not clogged and that there is free flow of blood. Um, if you have any, whatever it is, you know, if if you wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, and and let's say you go to pee, and you find out your your the pee that comes out is yellow, um, or even orange, it tells you that you are severely dehydrated, and that your kidney needs help, so you need to drink a lot of water to flush it, and the water has to be uh, good water, which is alkaline water. So the body speaks to us on a daily basis. So you don't wait till the problem gets to the blood. When it gets to the blood, that is where the medical institutions are trained to address the issues in the blood because now it's gotten to a point of almost no return. You've waited um, for too long for the problem to show in your blood. And so sometimes you may go to see the doctor, you may go to the hospital, they'll do a series of blood tests and they will not find anything, okay? They will not find anything. Yet your body tells you that something is not quite right. It is because you have not understood the symptoms of the body, okay? Um, The symptoms of the body, when the body speaks to you, you need to understand those symptoms. And so on our website, we'll be posting some of the symptoms um, that are related to, of course, how you feel and and, and, um, what you can do about it, okay? Now, based on these symptoms, we have a program at, at, um, here at our institute, we have a program called Nutritional Body Analysis or Nutritional Blood Analysis. Now, what that means is that we use a microscope, again, like the microscope there. Uh, for those of you who haven't quite seen a microscope before, uh, used one, of course, this is how it looks. Uh, what we do is that we put a drop of blood under the microscope, we project this on a television screen, and when we do that, it is going to show us your blood. Now, this is what the doctors don't do. The nutritional side of the blood that we're going to see is we're going to check for impurities. 
okay we're going to check for impurities in your blood so that if you don't really digest your food if your digestive system is weak it is going to show in your blood if you have undigested protein for instance it's going to show as uric acid crystals you see it live in color in your blood if um, you have problems with your arteries as you see in a photo back there if you have blockage in your arteries the plaque is going to actually show in your blood okay because the stress that you put on your kidney and your liver to filter some of these toxins and a lot of things going on in your body becomes an overflow in the blood so the blood is a clear indication of your health if your blood cells are clean and clear and we see that on the tv screen when we connect the microscope then it tells you that you're on your way to good health but on the converse side if it's not clean and clear then that is where you need to take a step to help yourself but before we get to that level where i'll show you something on the microscope which is going to be um, in the next class or so before we do a live test for someone to see for you to see how this thing works and 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 for the most part it's a wake-up call i tell you when you see your blood under the microscope and you see the cells moving all stuck together it wakes you up and that is where um you know you begin to heed into some of the advice when it comes to um eating well you know and drinking the right water exercise and taking supplementation and all of that um that is where you wake up but for now i'm going to talk to you about the blood understand your own blood once you understand your own blood, then you know why it is important to eat the certain foods and stay away from the others. Here, I have a chart that is showing you something here. The blood groups are in four. We have O, A, AB, and then B. Now, when you look at it, down here, when it comes to blood transfusion, the, the, the indications that I have there in the rectangle is for you to understand how tr blood transfusion works. But for the purpose of this class, we are not talking about blood transfusion. For the purpose of this class, just understand that th there are four different blood types, okay? And when you look at the blood types, these here, the first one is fucose. We, we have garnac and then D galactose. We'll be talking about these as we go along. But these are indications of the shape of what something called lectin, which we will talk about. Now, when you eat your food or when you consume anything, these shapes are going to determine if whatever you consume has a conflicting interest with your blood cells. If it, if it complements your blood or if it doesn't complement your blood, okay? So understand that there are four different blood types. And based on your blood type, certain foods are complementary to your gene than others. And that is why it is extremely important that you know. Now, if you don't know your blood type, at the end of this class, I'm going to show you a test kit that you can try to get to help yourself. Or you can go to a doctor and the doctor will tell you what your blood type is. Okay. So we have the four blood groups or blood types. Now, it's not only human beings that do have blood types. We do have animals, so pig or goat or sheep, chicken, all of these animals do have specific blood types. Seaweed, okay, do have specific blood type. Uh, animals, like I said, um, dust, even dust that you you know you clean at home, do have blood types. If you if you drink milk, cow milk, it does have blood type bacteria fungus all of these do have blood types so the reaction that someone is going to have um one person may have adverse reaction to drinking milk the other may not as much we know that milk is from cajun okay milk causes excess mucus in the body but one blood type may have adverse reaction to it because of the blood type of the milk it may be complementary to one person than the other Okay, now bacteria here and the viruses may have an attack on one individual at a higher rate than the other. Again, it's because of the type of blood that um, the bacteria may have. Okay, so again, understand that it's not just human beings, it's not just people.
but also different substances, animals, um, objects. Um, you know, both living and non non living have different blood types. Okay, so let's understand that. Now, when it comes to eating, there's a reason why we tell you to eat fruits and vegetables a lot. But today I'm going to just talk about one example. Now, if you've been to the farm before, uh, some of us were brought up in, in the village before we came to the city. But when you go to the farm, sometimes what you find is when you're walking through the bush, uh, these round little things will be sticking in, in, your, in your pants or trousers, as we call it back home. Now, those little things, I'm using that as an example for you to imagine. Now, you see how it sticks in your trousers when you're walking through the farm. Every time you eat any food that is not complementary to your gene or blood type, it is going to stick your blood cells together. They call it agglutination, I'll show you. It is going to stick it together. So it's like glue that is sticking that substance together. So every time that you eat food that is not good for you, that is exactly what is going to happen. The more you keep eating such foods that are not complementary to your blood type or gene, the more your blood cells are going to stick together. I'll show you an example here. So this one is banana. In the banana, in the blood of the type O, if someone is blood type O and he or she eats banana, the blood cells are not going to stick together because banana is complementary to the blood type O. Now the opposite is blood type A. If a type A individual eats banana, Again, this is what I was talking about, those black things that you see there. If a type A individual eats banana, the cells are going to stick together. We call that agglutination. In layman's term, we call this mucus. Because when you eat the banana, even though it's good fruit, not everyone can eat banana. Especially in our time when bananas have been hybridized. Okay? Now you see the banana as the size of a plantain. Bananas are usually very short, okay? Small. And banana, by the way, those of you who think banana is from Africa, it's not an African fruit. It is from Asia. It doesn't mean it's bad for you. It just means that we have adapted to that kind of fruit because it's been in our environment for quite a bit of time. And so if you don't know your blood type and you like eating banana, you might think, and maybe you can have adverse you know, reaction down the line. You might not know that the fruit is what is causing the problem because you know you've been taught that fruits are good, which they are depending on what kind of fruit and how it's grown in what environment and whether or not it has chemicals that are used to grow. So again, understand, this is a very, very basic understanding here that depending on your blood type, certain foods may be complementary to your gene more than others. Now let's go to here. Again, as I said, lectins. Lectins are dangerous glue. Now lectins are good. They are part of the human existence. They are in, like I said, in everything that we consume or not consume. But different foods have different lectin types, okay? If you look at it. So banana, as we saw in the previous one, has focus. And that is why that is complementary to the blood type O and not so much of the A. And there is, as an example, we have peanut here and then we have some grains. So again, some may stick together, others may not. This is how it works when lectins are sticking on the surface of the blood cell. Now let's look here. So the lectin, depending on what kind of lectin it is, it is going to find out when it goes, when you eat the food, the lectins in that food are going to try to attach themselves to the blood cells. Now, if it finds that it has a binding spot where it will fit, in this case, that shape will be able to fit on there, then it is going to do what? Agglutinate. It is going to stick to it. Now, if it finds that there's no binding site, which means that the shape of that is different from the shape of the cell, the lectin on the cell, then it's not going to bind to it. I'm going to take you to the very, very... I'm sorry, the, the first page that I took you. The very first page, I give an example here, the D galactose, the garnac, and the fucus. And we're saying that the shapes, this is a circle, there's a triangle, and that is a logoligida, a zigzag, whatever it's called. So 
once once it finds the shape of it so if it's the shape of a circle and it has a circular shape there then it is going to stick to it and that is where problem comes when that happens guess what you get something called inflammation okay so some effects of lactins you're going to see here now usually we call these the nightshade um, crops or plants. Here, in, in I'm, I'm a native of Ghana. In Ghana, we call it garden eggs. Garden eggs are a little different from this one. This kind of eggplant here in America, they call it eggplant. Now, eggplants have different origins. You know, eggplants from China, from India, from Brazil, from different parts of the world of this color, okay? And then we have potato and we have tomatoes. Now, these are called the nightshades. Now, depending on your blood type, these would always cause problems to your health when you eat them. Understand that a lot of these that you come across are hybrids. They're hybridized plants. So, not originally from nature. They've, been, they've gone through a process of, of remanufacture by, of course, by scientists. And so, when I talk about hybridization and genetic modification, now in one of the classes, you're going to understand what I mean by that. So when you're consuming these foods, just be aware of the source of the food and whether or not it is compatible to your blood type. Again, if you eat these foods, I'm not saying they are bad. I'm saying that they may be good for some people, not good for everyone. And so what you find out that is that you may have joint pains. You see, when you look down here, I put it there. So here, arthro. It's your joint, and then itis means inflammation. So arthritis will be inflammation of your joint. Wherever there is excess mucus, agglutination, okay? Agglutination, as I mentioned, which I'll explain again, means that um, there is excess mucus. Agglutinate means gluing together. So where, wherever the body finds excess mucus, that is where the, the disease or malady is going to be described. And I'll give you examples here shortly as we come to that. So just be mindful of the effect of lectins um, when you eat certain foods here. Let's talk about more effect of lectins. Now, when you eat the wrong food, you know, God Almighty is merciful. He's made a body in such a way that it, it's able to take care of itself. It, it repairs itself and it doesn't just reject food immediately. If not, we'd be long dead. Everyone, nobody would survive. It takes time. You know, it warns you. The first time it's going to give you warning that, oh, the food that you just ate, um, you know, it doesn't go down well with you. And the body will tell you that. If you don't listen and you eat it again, it will tell you again. Now, some people override it and keep eating the same food because they like the taste or maybe because that's all they have to eat. Down the line, the body becomes accustomed to it and then it will accept it. Well, when it accepts it, it doesn't mean it is good for the body. Now, the body is going to use it, and then the side effects, the effects are going to be there. Now, it's going to be mild, but it's going to complicate. It's going to compound to a different problem. Now, if you had listened to the beginning when it was giving you the symptoms and you changed it, it probably would have helped you. Because when it complicates the, to, to the next um, problem, now they have to try to find out how they can resolve the problem. But it's not easy. So that's why doctors put you on medication without causing addressing the root cause of the problem of you stopping um, the food that you're ingesting because that is toxin to the body, okay? So in one of the classes, you're going to learn about the cause of disease, which is just one, and we'll talk about it uh, when we get there. But in the meantime, still sticking to the effect of lectins. Lectin is a very broad topic. So as I said, if you're eating the wrong food, the lectins are going to agglutinate into the lining of the stomach. And so for blood type O's, for instance, if you eat any citrus fruit, like say orange, okay, you're going to have heartburn or stomach um, um, pain sometimes. Not just that, you could eat um, rice, okay? Rice has excess mucus in it, so much mucus. Now for that type O, if you eat so much rice quite often, you periodically or even quite often, you'll be getting heartburn, depending on how much toxins you have accumulated in your body. Even amongst type O's, different people have different reactions, depending on how well you take care of, your, you take care of yourself. And so it is imperative that you pay attention to these foods. 
as we talk about them, as we go along, I'll be giving you information on what foods cause the, the, the most problems to people. Today, I'm going to give you a few of the food list um, based on your blood type. And so you'd know what food may cause um, a problem, more problem to you than others. Okay. And also based on your blood type, we'll give you a food guide. I'll give you the website where you can go, you can visit. Um, by the end of the class, I'll give you the website you visit and you find out what foods, again, are complementary to you based on the foods that are in our current environment. Okay. Now, if you're in any different country that are, um, you're watching this, I would urge you to um, use the, the guide that I'm giving you as just a guide. Um, look for the foods in the environment that are native to the land. Okay. Native to the land. I'm not talking about staple food. Uh, again, when I come to the native foods of Africa, I'll be talking about what existed before the coming of the Europeans, specific foods. And so I'm not talking about staple food, like eating fufu. Fufu is not, it's just a staple food, but it's not native to the land of Africa because cassava is not from Africa. It was adapted. And that is the, you know, the problem of Africans. Um, so I'll talk about that later, why we have high um, issues of diabetes. So again, lectins are glutinating in the lining of the stomach. And when you feel some pain, it's just because of that. You've eaten something that is not going down well with you. Now, when we come here, the lining of the stomach again, again, all the, the small intestine, and small intestine is where your nutrients absorb, okay? Now, when the food makes its way there, see, it's like towel when you take shower. When you take shower um, and you're wiping yourself, use the towel. The towel has that little, you know, tiny, um, uneven, I mean, um, surface that is supposed to absorb water. Now, this is also the same thing. It does the same thing. It's able to absorb the nutrients. If you eat the wrong food, this is what is going to happen. It is going to destroy the microvilli, okay? These tiny little things there, okay? If the food is not complementary to you, that means it turns into acid. So you have excess acid in your body, and it's going to affect these things here. And those are not easy to repair. It takes many, 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 many years for you to come back to normal after correcting your diet. So why spoil it and try to go through the pain and try to correct it later? Those who have stomach ulcers, please. This is a typical example of what happens in the stomach, okay? It causes major problem to you. So let's take note of that. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the effects of lactins. Well, we've talked about a whole bunch of them, but when there's excess mucus, okay, lactins would create excess mucus because it's, it's a toxin, um, toxin that goes um, in your body. Not necessarily toxic for everyone, but depending on who um, is consuming the food and what kind of food it is. Now, you hear all these beautiful names when it comes to diseases, beautiful names. So you're gonna hear something called arthritis, like I said. Arthritis is just excess accumulation of mucus in your joints. You hear bronchitis. Bronchitis is what? Um, excess mucus in your bronchial tube. You hear pneumonia. Pneumonia is excess mucus in your lungs. You hear arteriosclerosis, okay? That is what? Excess mucus in your arteries, as you see it right there, okay? So wherever there is excess mucus formed in your body, that is where the disease is found. Look, here, sinus, right? Sinusitis. Excess mucus in your sinus, in your nasal passage there. And that is your problem there, okay? If you have um, hepatitis, okay, people have hepatitis C, B, whatever it is, it is the stress on your liver, there's excess mucus there. The, 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 the liver is so intoxicated, it needs to be cleansed, okay? It constantly is being fed some toxins and it's so much stress on it. When the liver is affected, your kidney is affected, the gallbladder, all these organs are also affected. And if the liver is not able to perform its function, guess what? It is going to depend on another organ to carry out its function. But the other organ was not de 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 designed by God Almighty to carry out the function of the liver. But when the liver is failing, or for that matter, any organ, then it has to recruit another organ. And that organ has to do both work, what it is naturally um, made to do. And then, of course, the mere fact that Another, uh, let's say the kidney is failing. If the liver is going to take on the work of the kidney, well, the liver is made for something else, but it's taking on the filtration part of the kidney as well. 
and that is a problem for the body okay so different problems that the body experiences is as a matter of inflammation you hear inflammation all the time agglutination and again in layman's term it is um excess mucus okay all right now i'm going to give you an example of some foods this is not you know by all means an exhaustive list i'm going to give you on the chart here based on your blood type certain foods that have um, very dangerous lactins okay agglutinating foods that cause problems to um, to you based on your blood type okay so these you can take note again i'll give you the website information so you can go there and download um, a long list of the foods that i have compiled in in you know in in graphical form so you see the food and graphics and you also see the name and whether or not it is complementary to your gene or, or your blood type you'll find out but here the most damaging lactins for specific blood types is what i have there and i'll go through briefly with you just in case you're listening or watching all right so we have blood type o if your blood type o it is prudent to stay away from these kinds of foods wheat corn, kidney beans, navy beans, lentils, peanuts, and potatoes, okay, for the blood type O. And please do not tell me wheat is natural, unless you're not staying abreast with, with times right now. There's so much information on food that is going on. We can teach you everything, but I'm letting you know that please research and find out. It is almost impossible to find any natural wheat anymore, okay? It has gone through a natural, um, I'm sorry, it has gone through modification process. So the wheat of yesterday is not the wheat of today. So don't think of the yesterday um, um, information and apply it to today. No, because it doesn't work. Corn, for instance, again, pardon me if you're, watch, if you're from a, you know, a different country, which I hope so. I hope a lot of people are watching from different countries or listening from different countries. But corn in the United States is 96% genetically modified. I will explain genetic modification when I'm explaining hybridization. But if corn is 96% genetically modified, how can you stay in America and tell me you're enjoying corn, um, you're enjoying pinky as a Ghanaian? How can you tell me you're living in America and enjoying banku as a Ghanaian? For other cultures, I don't know what you use corn for, but corn in America is actually grown in Iowa, the state of Iowa. And the natives of that land do not consume this corn that they grow because they know that it is unnatural. It has gone through a modification process. So for the most part, even when you consume corn, when you go to the bathroom in your stool, sometimes you see corn in it. Well, that tells you there is indigestion going on, but that also tells you about the kind of food that you consume it. So please, if you're eating banku, if you're eating kenke, especially in this country, please don't research into it. It's by, on, by no means any good food for you. What you're eating is that you're eating the GMO food with what? With high sodium. You've got so much salt in, in the kenke that you eat. Now, as time goes on, as you stay tuned and stay close to the teachings that we give you, I'm going to give you the alternative to corn flour that you use for banku. And, and kinky. I'm going to give you a very natural, healthy alternative to that so you can use that um, to your advantage and feed your family the, the right um, kind of food. Okay? All right. Now, again, kidney beans, these are all I, one of the classes I taught. I had mentioned that kidney beans and navy beans and all of that beans was um, made in, in Holland. It was, you know, I mentioned the name Gregor um, Mendel, who he experimented with beans and came out with all these different varieties of beans. So in, 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 in brief, I'm letting you know, if you're of African origin, all these hybrid foods and genetic modified, you know, genetically modified foods are not complementary to your gene. You are very highly electrical. So it's only electrical foods that are complementary to you. And as we go along, I'll be sharing some electrical foods um, with you. Now, when we come down here, blood type A, again, kidney beans, lima beans, potatoes, cabbage, eggplant, bananas, and tomatoes, they are not complementary to your blood type, okay? Now, if you realize 
I've mentioned potatoes, eggplant, and tomatoes. Now, in the first not one of the charts I showed you of the nightshades, okay, I'll show you again. I showed you here that the nightshades are these three, tomatoes, okay, potatoes, and eggplant. It's not a complete list, but these are part of the nightshade crops. When you eat these and your blood type A, you'd have joint pains. So if for some reason you have constant joint pains for the type A, if you have blood type A, please, if you eat these foods, try to get them out and drink a lot of water. It's going to help you um, ease the pain and the pain will begin subsiding. Again, there may be a reason why that um, problem is maybe going on if you're having joint pain, severe joint pains, and I'll come to that. It's called stomach acid. Why the, the, the food of the blood type O is the opposite of blood type A. I'm going to explain that to you in a moment here. But again, let me finalize with here. The blood type B has chicken. Okay, these are again damaging lectins to your blood type or to your body. It's chicken, corn, buckwheat, lentils, peanuts, sesame seeds, and tomatoes, okay? For the blood type AB, not many Africans are blood type ABs, but of course, there are a few that I've come across. Chicken, um, you know, certain white fish, corn, buckwheat, lima beans, kidney beans, and sesame seeds. These are the most dangerous mucus-forming foods to the specific blood types. Okay, these are some, it's a quite a bit of them, but these are the common ones that people eat on a daily basis, and that is why I had to bring this up. Okay, all right. So it is extremely important that you know your blood type. If you don't know it, please um, try to find a way to know your blood type. I'll share with you a blood test kit that you can get from us, or you can go to your doctor, and um, you know, uh, usually they may have it not necessarily on file, uh, if you haven't requested for it. So they may test it for about $100, $125, $50. Um, you can do it there. Or you can donate to the Red Cross, okay, the American Red Cross, or maybe the Ghana Red Cross, or Nigerian Red Cross, wherever it is. When you donate blood, they're going to tell you what your blood type is. So it's a way to give to you know humanity, but also to get information. Or you can order from us here. We have a blood test kit. We show you how to do this at the comfort of your home. You do it yourself. We show you how to use this. It's just for a very, very minimal cost here. Um, when you call us, we'll let you know it's under $50. So when you get this, you do the test at home. And uh, in five to six minutes, you will find out what your blood type is. And once you know, you'll be able to utilize the information we provided on our website when it comes to the type of foods that are complementary to your blood type. We've indicated it. So for instance, if you test your blood and you find out that your blood type O, when you go to the website, we have the list of foods that are complementary to the blood type O. So you could call us here. I will, we will leave the information and you can get a copy for yourself. So here. Agglutination, gluing together. This is a term I have used over and over again today. If your blood cells are not well, if you're not eating the right kind of food, your cells are going to stick together. This is unhealthy cells. And if your cells are not sticking together, that means they're healthy. So this is what we are going to learn next under the microscope when we project on the TV screen and then we're going to show you live. So be prepared to find out if your cells are sticking together or if your cells are alive like this. For the most part, what you find out is that most people who have cells sticking together, it's not just the cells sticking together. We're only supposed to see the red blood cells in large numbers. We're supposed to see the white blood cells, maybe one is for every five to 700 of the red blood cells. And we're also supposed to see you know, the, the, the plasma, which is in the background, you don't see it clearly. So you're going to see, we're supposed to see two things, the red blood cells and the white blood cells. But what we find out when we do these test the analysis and the microscope is that you're going to see the undigested food okay undigested protein particles undigested fat undigested sugars you're going to see it in your blood live in color and so it's a wake-up call for all of us when you see this then you take the action because we show you what action you need to take to make sure that you cleanse your blood and desegregate the cells and make sure it is as clean as that so you have the healthy blood cells and not this clumped on healthy blood cells, okay?
All right. So this is a snapshot of information about your blood and your blood cells. In the next class, we're going to talk about how you can help your own self identify the problems in your blood through the, the analysis that we do. Because Heal Africa, uh, what we are, of course, as we've explained, Heal Africa is there for you. We are going through the churches, okay? We come to your church with a team of people. We have the, the our, our, our instruments set up. You come there and screen. We just don't do the screening. We, we don't only do the screening, but the beautiful thing is that we provide the natural herbs that are complementary to your to your health as an African. We provide that through the church. You get access to that. We provide the foods that are complementary to your health, the natural food that existed before the coming of the European. We provide that, so you'd have access to it. And then, if you're the local, we provide the natural water, alkaline water, alkaline spring water, not alkaline water that has been, um, you know, run through a mechanic means. No, we don't give you that water. Again, when I come to um, staying hydrated and talking about water, I will test live. I'll test live the kind of water that you drink and the water that we provide or well, we make available to Heal Africa, to all churches across the United States, in Ghana and all over, countries that um, you know invite us. So please, share this with your pastor. Let your pastor or leaders of the church contact us. We're willing to come there and teach you on nutrition. We're willing to come there and screen you so you find out in live, uh, 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 you know, live in color what is going on in your body, with your cells, with your blood. Again, Leviticus 17, 11 says, life is in the blood. So if you want to live for a long time without the pain and, and all these maladies that are going on, please help yourself. Don't wait till it's too late. Let us come there. We are not medical doctors, we are nutritional consultants. We help you put your nutritional health into shape and into check. And you know that if your body is sound, okay, and your mind is sound, you'll be able to serve your God from the, the bottom of your heart. You serve God's people well, and you're going to live for a long time doing God's work. We're all going to die someday. But why go through all this pain and stress and still and, and die anyway? See, we want to live to do the work of God, and hopefully. You age to be 80s, 90s, 100 without going through all these, um, you know, cancer and all these diseases that are erupting. How could that happen in the house of God? So help us help you. And um, we'll meet in the next video. Um, next time, God willing, next week, we're going to talk about some beautiful thing. This will be the introduction of the test that we're going to do. The introduction will be this. If you look at the stomach acid, there is a reason why that blood type O is able to tolerate certain foods that the blood type A's cannot. Naturally, blood type O's have high concentration of stomach acid, followed by the blood type B, AB, and then the blood type A. So if the blood type O person eats meat, because of the high level of hydrochloric acid, they're able to digest it. Well, the opposite is true for blood type A. If the blood type A eats meat, it is not able to digest, okay? And that turns into toxins. So statistically in America, over 70% of the women that have issue with breast cancer, I apologize, over 70% of women with issues of breast cancer are blood type A's. It is easy for them to accumulate toxins in their body. So please, if you don't know your blood type, there may be some challenges going on that you don't know what. Um, what to do is probably because you're you are ingesting the wrong things. So we can help give you some advice here um, based on what you consume and what herbs uh, could help you. So with this, having this in mind, next our next class, when we talk, when we do the screening and then we show you and you find out how much um, undigested um, proteins or fats or sugars are in your blood and you know your blood type, you would really understand because we're going to share with you enzyme. Once you eat cooked food, we're going to show you why you should eat a lot of raw foods versus the cooked food. We are not asking you to be a vegetarian or vegan and all of that. No. All we're asking you to, to do is introduce quite a bit of fruits and vegetables into your food. And we will explain why that is an absolute necessity if you want to live a healthier, longer life to be able to serve uh, the God Almighty who created you and I. Okay?
So until we meet you in the next class, it's peace, shalom, and life to you all. This is Nana Obeng Mayarisa. I'll talk to you again. There is a saying that money in this world cannot buy all that good health that you're looking for. That is a reason why COP USA Radio is bringing to you, you and your health. Heal Africa, rich in organic nutrients. We want to let you know how your body is doing with Nana Obi from the organic way of healthy living. Heal Africa, Fridays between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Rebroadcast on Mondays between the hours of 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Live on COP USA Radio. Your health is important. Join us.